Well, slap on RGB strip on top and on bottom and call it a new O11. You know, it's not just like that. Come on, guys, it's literally here. There are new things as usual. This is the O11 Dynamic Evo RGB, guys, successor to the popular O11 Dynamic Evo case. So let's dive in after a word from our sponsor. Looking for affordable Windows or Office keys? Look no further, I got you covered. Head over to scdkey.com, pick your Windows edition, use my discount code LE25 to get a 25% on any Windows or Office products. Once you complete your order, after a few seconds, you will receive your code. In Windows, go to Settings, there should be an Activate Windows prompt at the bottom. Click that, enter your code, and wait for Windows to finish activation. To check the activation status, use the command prompt with a command slmgr.vbs slash xpr and you should receive a notification that the machine is permanently activated. Once again, use code LE25 at scdkey.com. So let's start with the basics. Dimensions 478 by 290 by 471 millimeters, looking almost the same as all O11 cases when you look at it, so it's recognizable, no doubt about that. Glass panel on the side, easily removable from the back side held by pegs and secured with steel pins at the bottom as well. It's a 4mm tempered glass, of course, on the side and on the front. Both panels are removable, of course. The latest edition carried over from the XL and the Vision model and, of course, once again, a very popular community mod which Lian Li accepted and gives us a stock option now. It's a removable front pillar for that seamless fish tank look. The top panel is held by two screws at the back and it's perforated just enough so there is no need for that extra flimsy mesh filters at the top. Inside of the case, it's spacious enough for top tier hardware, so no worries with 1490 cards and such, 455mm soft clearance for the GPU and 167mm for the CPU tower in case you decide to air cool your CPU. Rubber grommets are present on all cable holes, top, bottom and on the side as well. They are all grey colored by the way, I don't know why not white since it's a white case obviously, maybe to give it some contrast, I don't mind it at all, but I am puzzled by some choices since this case is not sharing the inner frame with the Vision model since it does not have the removable motherboard tray, but it has an option to move the board up if needed to give you more space for bottom fans plus a radiator here for that extra space in case you decide to do a custom water cooling loop in it. Similar approach as in the Lancool 216 case if I remember, there is this plastic piece at the back which you can remove and place down in case you decide to move the board up. The board support is up to extended ATX under 280mm and of course ATX, micro ATX and mini ITX formats. But this time it has great fan support, better than before actually. At the bottom they have a classic bracket on which you can mount the fans and slide it back in for that easy build process. The fan support at the bottom is either 3120mm fans or 3140mm fans and up to 360mm for the radiator support. At the top we are looking at the same fan size support with the removal bracket of course, but this time you can mount 420mm rads up top with these included brackets that come with the case. This was not possible with previous O11 models, except for the XL model, of course. At the back, it's a support for a single 120mm fan, not dual as on the Vision model, but you have a slight movement for the fan up or down if needed. The side fan support is excellent once again up to 3140mm fans, but again the support is limited for radiators up to 360mm. In case you are interested in clearances for top and bottom sections, I have it listed for you on the screen for both standard or upper motherboard position. Pause the screen if needed here. Same as the O11D EVO, the O11D EVO RGB keeps the ability to be fully reversed for the users who prefer their computer located at the left side of their desk. By switching the top panel with the bottom of the case, you can flip the case and have that reversed configuration. I of course do not like this and I did not bother to do it, but there you have that option, I'm just letting you know that. The front IO panel is the same as on the regular O11D EVO model, one USB-C port, two USB 3.0 ports and a mic and headphone combo jack. The panel is of course removable so you can position it either on the front or on the side of the case if that is more convenient for you. Looking at this case at the rear side, things are familiar, but there are some slight changes. First of all, both the PSU chamber and hard drive cages protrude to the outside to give you more space on the inside. 
You can also notice that PCI brackets are completely removable with no column in the middle. And this gives you the ability to use the old Li and Li PCI riser, so if you have it already, you can use it with this case. The back panel is also held in place by pegs and it's perforated on both sides to allow fresh air intake for either side fans or PSU chamber. We now have a swinging magnetic door in the middle, like on the Vision and XL models. The side rails are of course removable for easy installation of fans or an AIO, but you can also rotate it so it can be closer or further away from the inside of the case. This time on it there are plastic covers, in case you do not want to use the fans here on the side, so it would look a bit nicer looking from the front of the case. But these plastic covers are also hard drive or SSD mounting places. You can mount up to 4 SSDs here or the 2.5-inch drives or two 3.5-inch drives here as well. Additional two 2.5-inch drives can be mounted on the swinging door. Right, after opening the door, things are familiar with newer models with the new cable clips with those velcro straps here. There are another two hard drive cages here with decoupled rubber so they can dampen the sound if you use 3.5 inch drives here. You can mount up to two 3.5 inch drives here or two 2.5 inch drives. I was curious if you can swap places for PSU and hard drive cages and yeah you can do this so this gives you the option to mount the PSU up which I do not recommend since it has a nice bracket at the bottom which further keeps it secured in the place. I mean it's resting on it. Plus this gives you more space at the top to hide your cables and controllers that Lian Li is known for. Of course here are the cables for the front IO panel, Lian Li decided to ditch the angled cables since some boards have the USB-C mounted differently, so not every board would benefit from angled USB-C cable. Plus it is easier this way if you use the Lian Li's very own GPU anti-sag bracket, which of course comes with this case in the box alongside the screws and all that, the updated 2.0 version like it was on the XL and the Vision mode. The bottom of the case has large enough feet to keep it elevated from the desk and it comes with a magnetic dust filter which you can remove for easier cleaning. You can see here as well how you can orient the front IO panel as well. So I saved the RGB part and the new buttons for last. So what is different from previous models is the RGB strip around the case, technically strips since it has one at the top and one here at the bottom. But there is no RGB strip in the front of the case anymore. I mean it would be too much honestly, but there is of course that corner power button, reset button, mode button, but also C and B buttons. Mode is of course used to change the light effects. C is for color change and B is for brightness since it has 5 brightness levels and 14 different predefined various effects. You can of course sync everything to your motherboard ARGB header and use it, I mean use the motherboard software to control the RGB. As usual there are DLCs available for this case. I already mentioned the PCI riser which is compatible from previous models. The RTX 40 upright GPU kit is also compatible from previous models, but there are new rails and front mesh kit for this case. My package took a wrong turn, so I can't show you this since I don't have it here. But basically you have new rails that you can mount here in the front and the mesh kit. And these rails support 3120mm fans, 3140mm fans and 260mm fans that were used on the Lancol 216 case. There is also an additional IO kit module available which gives you additional two USB 3.0 ports and one more USB-C port. That is about it for DLCs that are available. But what about the performance? Given the fact that you can now use 420 reds up top and 3140mm fans all around the case, this gives you options in terms of cooling. For me the best one is if AIO is mounted as an intake on the side, bottom fans are Intake, top and rear are exhaust. This in return gives best cooling with the GPU in either vertical or horizontal mode. The CPU never exceeded 73 degrees and GPU stayed below 67 degrees. You can of course play with this. There are other configs which will give you better CPU temperatures if you mount the AO up top, but will make your GPU hungry for more fresh air and keep it two to three degrees hotter. But as I said, experiment if you can, so you can see which combo gives you best results as it also varies with different hardware used as well. So play with it. 
The case is available in either black or white color with a price tag of 159 US dollars for the black model and 169 for the white model. DLCs are of course ranging from 29.99 up to 49.99, so pick your favorite one if you need any. I honestly think that apart from the vertical GPU riser, nothing else is needed, but that is just me. Case is excellent now, giving you more space for custom water cooling loops, but also much more space behind the motherboard tray, especially to hide a bunch of cables and Lee and Lee controllers that are known to be bulky and a lot of cables stick on them. But also more space for larger PSUs thanks to those parts that stick out of the case now at the back. So this was the issue with previous O11D Evo, at least for me. So what do you guys think about the new O11D Evo RGB case? I personally think that this was a much needed upgrade from the old model, especially for the cables at the back, but most notably for fan support and radiators. You can now have the best possible cooling experience with this case that you know and love since it is one of the most popular cases on the market today. Thanks for watching guys, sub to the channel, it really helps a lot, like and share the video and I'll be seeing you in the next one.